Of the hundreds of Christmas carols known the world around, we present four that are distinctly American in origin in The Music of Christmas in Sound and Story. I This song appeared December 25th, 1863, as a poem entitled Christmas Bells, written by the beloved American poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, just six months after the Battle of Gettysburg. In it, he voiced the anxiety of millions of weary hearts in America during the long, dark years of the Civil War. The author himself had been closely related to the horror of war. His young son, a lieutenant in the Army of the Potomac, had been seriously wounded in battle. The words in stanza three, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men, reflects those dark days when the dawn of peace between North and South was anxiously awaited. But the final stanza expresses those permanent longings of the human heart that in every conflict, right will prevail. The poem was furnished with a singable, enjoyable melody by J. Baptiste Calkin, a popular London organist in 1872. The bass notes sound like the ringing of a bell, while the last four measures originated in an old Amen. This song will fill the hearts of multitudes with joy, so long as church bells ring out the nativity message at Christmas time. In 1865, a young Philadelphia minister by the name of Phillips Brooks traveled in the Holy Land. On the day before Christmas, he rode horseback from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, passing through the fields where the shepherds on that great starlit night centuries ago watched their flocks. In Bethlehem that evening, he attended the beautiful Christmas service at the Church of the Nativity. Three years later, back at the Holy Trinity Church of Philadelphia, he wrote a poem for his Sunday school children to recapture that cherished memory. When it was complete, he asked his church organist to compose a melody for it. The organist, Louis Redner, worked at it for some weeks, but in vain. Until on Saturday night, he was awakened with what he described as an angel strain ringing in his ears. He arose, jotted down the melody, and filled in the harmony the next morning in time for the words and music to be sung by the teachers and students of the Sunday School. Dr. Brooks went on to become rector of one of the most famous parishes in New England and ultimately Bishop of Massachusetts. He was one of the best known preachers of his day. Yet it's possible he's most affectionately remembered as author of the inspiring verses which begin, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Oh, yeah. 